I'm just gonna put together a compilation of clips that I shoot on this camera. I'm gonna try to shoot at the maximum resolution that I can with what I've been given. I'm gonna do 6K, I'm gonna do slow-mo. Let's just go have fun. I'm gonna shoot everything in log. And uh, yeah, let's just go play with the S1H because I think that's all you guys actually care about. Focus on the S1H. And hello, testing one, two, three, and I'm gonna check the flip screen. Okay, it looks it looks decent. Uh, I don't know, you tell me. This is full 6K, you can see all the sweaty goodness. Is this reliable? Again, it's doing the Panasonic trick where uh, it clearly is recognizing my face. But I'm not 100% confident that it's actually in focus. It's not now, obviously. Uh, and boom, there it is. Okay. Wait for it. All right, ISO 640, ISO 800, ISO 1000, ISO 2500. ISO 6400, ISO 8000, ISO 10,000, ISO 20,000, ISO 51,000. Versus the maximum everything 6K. 
with V-Log. This is HLG something something. This is standard picture profile. This is the natural picture profile. This is Cine Like D2. Cine V, I think. Okay, so I actually have a little bit extra time here to talk to you guys about my first impressions with the S1H. I had about two hours to kind of run around and experience this camera firsthand. Hope you guys are happy with some of this test footage. Let me know in the comments below what you thought, which shots were your favorite, and uh, just some of your thoughts. Obviously, I haven't looked at the footage yet as I'm filming this video, but I'll just speak to my experience using this camera today. It's big, it's heavy for sure, but it's balanced really well with this lens and this body. I was a little worried because it's so thick and chunky that it would be uncomfortable to hold, but if you've ever picked up a cinema camera like a C200, for example, it's a big camera. It's it, That's just how it is. Cinema cameras are big cameras, and the C100 is a cinema camera that I've used in the past, and this reminds me of that in a lot of ways. It's roughly the same weight, and this is in a much more compact size than any cinema camera. It also has the benefit of looking like a normal stills camera, but performing like a true cinema camera with the 10 bit, with the 6K, with the slow motion. Uh, so overall, the handling on this has been pretty phenomenal. You've got your little joystick that I love and I wish every camera had. Uh, I know it's kind of an old fashioned thing, but having a joystick to me is pretty crucial. This little OLED display here is great. Even right now when the camera is turned off, I'm actually able to see that I have half of my battery left. I can also see the card space that is left on each card, I guess based on the last resolution that I was shooting at. There's multiple resolutions and different frame rate options. I'll put those on the screen now. Um, they're kind of all over the place, different types of sizes. There's anamorphic, there's non-anamorphic, 16 by nine, 17 by nine. Uh, there's this new mode that's just the full sensor readout, which is great. I guess they're just giving you as much resolution as possible, and I love that. The camera did not get hot on me at all. I was worried that this thing would kind of get really hot in the hands. I guess this fan here is able to cool the thing so that it's possible to use. I just think overall, everything's just really thought out. In order to do 4K 60, you do have to go into a cropped mode, a Super 35 mode. Um, I did that, obviously, and uh, it's useful for sure. Uh, but I actually really think shooting 1080p at 10-bit 422 internal at 120 frames per second is more useful than uh, 4K 60 with a crop. Obviously, the color science is amazing. We're using a lot of the very cam stuff uh, with this, with the V-Log. Um, the color was already great with the S1 and the GH5 and the GH5S, so all that's carried through here. The low light on this is uh, pretty amazing too. You've got the dual native ISO kind of thing going on, similar to the GH5S. Uh, I obviously haven't seen the footage on my computer screen, so you guys can attest to that. Let me know your thoughts on the low light performance. I was able to crank it up to 50,000 ISO, which of course is uh, ridiculous. You probably aren't gonna shoot at that ISO level, but uh, 3,200, uh, 6,400, even 10,000 ISO, those are pretty practical ISOs that I find myself shooting on occasion when the light is really low. And uh, if it's clean, if it's acceptable, that's amazing. I will say that using this flip screen and this uh, flip out screen thing was really practical in my shooting style today. I just had the camera on a Gorillapod and was just kind of handheld, just getting stuff of people walking by and close-ups of things. And I found the IBIS performance to be phenomenal. Uh, reminds me a lot of the GH5. Um, obviously, I've been using the Nikon Z6 for a lot of stuff, and I think the IBIS on that camera is really great. Uh, this is probably better than the Z6, so I'd have to do some comparisons there. Um, shooting manual focus was no problem. The focus peaking was more than adequate. I didn't find the screen to be too dim. I thought it was the perfect brightness. I had it on max brightness. And of course the EVF here is super high resolution and really usable. This lens too, the 24 to 70 f 2.8, I think is a perfect lens on this camera body. I hope to see a 16 to 35 2.8 to come uh, soon, hopefully. Um, I think overall Panasonic has knocked it out of the park with this camera. 
camera. This is not a vlogger camera. It's not a YouTuber camera by any means. This is really a professional cinema machine. And that's what Panasonic is telling us. That's what I keep hearing here at this event. This is not a vlogger camera at all. Um, but as a professional YouTuber myself and as somebody who wants the highest quality, I could totally see myself using this uh, as my main camera, to be completely honest. Even though I don't have crazy reliable autofocus, it is usable with the focus speaking, with this flip screen that is very handy to have, and with the body that has the amazing IBIS, and the incredible 120, and the 10 bit, and the 6K, so that I could crop in and still maintain a 4K resolution. This is a great tool for me, even though it doesn't have incredible autofocus, and that is a shame. Uh, but can't have everything all the time, and I think a lot of professional cinematographers are not gonna care anyways that it doesn't have autofocus. I just care a little bit. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and let me know what you wanna see with the Panasonic S1H in the future. Uh, I will definitely be picking up one of these as soon as possible and do a full review. Hope you guys enjoyed my first look video on the S1H, and uh, click this video if you want to see more videos that you might be interested in. Once again, I'm Dave Mays, this is Kinatika. See you next time.